All right, so hi guys, it's the 20th of September and I'm Adam Koo and I'm here to do a uh, update on what's been happening to the markets. So as you can see, for the last week or so, we've been going through the much anticipated pullback that I've been talking about for quite some time. I've been saying that the markets um, been on this impulsive way for quite an overextended period, it's time for a pullback. But again, no one could predict exactly when the pullback would occur, and neither could I. But I said, pullback's eminent. And sure enough, we got a pullback in the last week or so, right? So this uh, impulsive wave was a very extended impulsive wave, right? Breathe out, right? So we got to breathe in eventually. We can't breathe out forever, right? So sure enough, we have breathed in over here, which is a very healthy sign in the market. So remember that I like markets which breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. When it breathes out too much, uh, then it becomes a bit of a bubble, right? So a good thing that we now have this nice retracement. Uh, and this is a good way to shake out the weak holders. It's kind of like a the horse, uh, you know, the horse will always go north. But as more and more people get on the horse, the horse eventually has to kind of like jerk and throw people off the horse. And once people get thrown off the horse, the horse can then continue its journey, right? It shakes out the weak hands. It shakes out those with little faith, okay? So are we done with the sell-off or do we expect more sell-offs in the next couple of weeks? Well, let's take a look at this. So as you can see, I'm looking at the daily candles on the S&P 500 and this moving averages have been acting as a support, as you can see, right? Um, you know, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. And then we had these shallow breathing ins and then another breathing out. And then now we are retracing to this 50 moving average support. But on Friday, we closed below that 50 moving average, okay? Now, so the next couple of days, are pretty crucial. So the next three to five days, if we, we can close back above the 50 moving average, above this blue line, then it may continue its impulsive wave up, being another shallow retracement. But if the next five days, it cannot close back above the 50 moving average, then we will probably see more downside for the S&P 500, which is still very, very healthy. Why? Because if you take a look at the weekly candles, let's zoom out into a larger time frame. Look at the weekly candles. You can see that based on the weekly candles, we are still a bit overextended. We are far from the moving averages. So it's healthy that a stock or the market pulls back towards the moving average support before continuing its journey northwards. Okay. So if you take a look at the bigger picture, you notice that when the S&P pulls back, right, because he's breathing out, breathing in, okay, breathing out, breathing in. When it breathes in, when it retraces, you can see it retraces uh, to at least the 40 EMA, which is the blue dotted line over there, all right? Then if it's a very uh, deep retracement, okay, it can, of course, go to uh, the bigger moving averages. But I don't expect these huge drops because these are bear markets, right? So this was a bear market, exactly 20%. Anything which is 20% or more is a bear market, right? This was uh, the bear market in February. This was 36%. And again, these bear markets usually happen once every five years, all right? So if you think about it, we had two bear markets in a space of a year. So if you think statistically, it's kind of like, we should not have another bear market for quite a while, but you never know, right? But what I'm saying is that these bear markets, uh, you know, statistically, they happen once every five years. So I don't expect another drop of, you know, 20 or 30%, but I expect more of these healthy corrections, okay? So if we're getting another one of these healthy corrections, which I expect, and very much in line with the seasonal pattern of the market, right? This is textbook seasonal pattern. What do I mean? I've mentioned this before in my previous videos about seasonal patterns, right? So based on the last 30 to 100 years, you find that the markets tend to move in a certain cycle, a certain pattern like the weather, 
Although the weather's not always accurate right now, so this ha doesn't happen all the time, but it's worth looking into. So you can see that based on seasonal patterns, uh, the market tends to kind of like, you know, go sideways from June to uh, late August, right? And what happens is early September, as you can see, seasonality tells us that markets tend to get a bit bearish in September and tend to bottom at the end of October. And that sets up the rally towards the end of the year. And by the way, this year is US election year as well. And this pattern plays out on election years as well. All right. So uh, what has happened, the sell off in September, October, it's textbook seasonal pattern. Okay. All right. So let's go back to the charts and take a look. How much further um, would we probably drop before we find support and we rally towards the end of the year. All right, so again, it's always hard to predict exactly where that point will be, but we can take a few guesses, a few steps, all right, and get ready uh, for uh, re-entry into the markets, whether you're a trader or investor, okay? So the first thing is looking at moving averages. That gives you a clue, okay? So from the past, we can see again, which moving averages have been support levels? Well, obviously the 40 moving average, right? The blue dotted line you can see bounced off, you know, bounced off. So that has historically been a support level. So where would that be? That would be there, that blue line over there. There we go, ding, ding. All right, oops, clicked on the wrong thing. Uh, let me go to a horizontal line. Ding, ding. All right, there we go. So three, one, three, two, if we, don't close back above the 50 moving average on daily candles, then I expect us to go down to 3132, which is the previous supports over there. Okay, now if it goes even deeper, hey, it may even go to uh, 2957, all right? But I doubt it's gonna go that low, but you never know, probably around this area. Now, if we use Fibonacci, let's take a look at Fibonacci, which tells us the ABC pattern. So you can see that uh, if we take this as the start of the, the recent impulsive wave, let's use our Fibonacci tool. So that's A, and we go to B, that's our B level. Okay, um, then you see possibly Another possible level of support would be uh, 3204. So let me draw this line 3204. So again, we can find support levels either using moving averages, previous highs and lows, swing lows, or Fibonacci. So based on Fibonacci, if we think we have a 61.8% retracement, that would bring us to 3204 over there. And this is also a significant level. Why? Because this was previous resistance. Can you see this is previous swing high over there? So previous swing high or resistance could become previous support. And this is also the 20 EMA red dotted line. So that could also be a signif significant level. All right. So let me remove the Fibonacci now so it doesn't get too confusing. But we have drawn that line. All right. So we've got a support level at 3201 another support at 3132, all right? So that's support level one, support level two, and if we break all these, we could, of course, go to support level three. Again, you never know uh, exactly where the bottom of the retracement will be. You, you never know, all right? So what do you do? Well, simple. If you are an investor, all right? Investor, you take a long-term perspective. Investor, you don't have a stop loss you buy in stages, you use a dollar cost averaging approach, okay? So as an investor, if the market hits 3201, you could buy some shares, right? Nibble a bit, dollar cost averaging. And then if it goes to 3132, you buy a bit more, goes to 2956, you can take a bigger position. We average in our position because we know that, hey, these are the 500 uh, companies that make up the majority of the markets, it will eventually go higher, right? So if we just average in, eventually, hallelujah, it's gonna go up, gonna make um, a lot more over time. 
Now, if you are a short-term trader, you're a swing trader, then of course, as a trader, you don't average in, right? You just go in one time, place a stop loss, profit target, that's it. So for a trader, you wanna wait for a confirmation candle, right? Bullish confirmation candle, like a bullish engulfing candle, a pin bar, something like that, on the lower time frames, on the daily candles, all right? So, but you wanna wait for these levels, again, 3201, 3132, 2956, and once it hits this level, and if you see a bullish candlestick pattern, you know, take a short-term trade, swing trade, you zoom down to daily candles to do that. All right, so that's my uh, anticipation of the S&P 500. Again, we can't predict the future, we can only make intelligent guesses and take action based on these guesses, which are based on probability. What's interesting about this retracement is that not all stocks have been going down. Usually the market's pretty correlated, which means that when the index goes down, every darn thing goes down. But in this case, not everything's going down. In fact, as the market's going down, the S&P 500, the non-stay-at-home stocks, the cyclical stocks, are going up, like industrial stocks, like financial stocks are going up. So this is the complete opposite of what's been happening um, during this massive rally. Now, we actually hit the low sometime in late March. And then the market has rarely, whoa, you know, kind of like we've gone up 60% or more um, from the lows and we are kind of like above the all-time high. Now, some of you would know from my previous videos that this rally, people are saying, you know, how can the market go up 60% when the economy is uh, not doing well? It's an illusion, right? Why? You see, this 60% bull market was not caused by all the 500 companies in the S&P 500. In fact, in the S&P 500, only less than 10 companies or about five companies went up. And because these companies are so big, the market of companies, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Google, because they're so big, they put the whole index up. All right. It's kind of like, imagine in a company of 500 people in the company, only five guys are working, all right? And they're the ones pulling all the business and 495 people are sleeping. That's what's, what's happening over here, all right? In fact, if you take a look at my uh, recent report, uh, this was the September report, right? You can see over here, right? Since the March lows, and again, credit goes to Goldman Sachs Investment Research, from the March lows, you can see the market, uh, oops, sorry, not this one, right? The market or the S&P 500, you know, has recovered, right? Over here. But again, it's not all 500 companies, right? You see that all the gains were made by these five heavenly kings, all right? Uh, the five stay-at-home stocks. But the rest of the companies, the remaining 495 companies, Yep, they went up as well, right? Some of them never went up, and they went up as well, but they are actually still down. So it's these five guys pulling everyone up. So not the whole market went up. And so people saying that, you know, market's in a bubble, you know, I don't buy that, right? Because not everything went up. It's only these five guys that went up. And these five guys that went up, they deserve to go up. They deserve their valuations. Why? Because they are making so much money. In fact, Apple had a blowout quarter they sold more iPhones, more Macs than any time in history. So, and that's why I call them the stay-at-home stocks because the more people stay at home, the more the pandemic lasts, the more they will benefit. But the other companies, kind of like the industrial companies, the banks, they can only do well if the pandemic is over. So the funny thing is that when people think that the pandemic's gonna last for a long time, right, people are pessimistic about the economy, these guys will do well because they are stay-at-home stocks. And the cyclical stocks will not do well. What's happening now is really interesting. What's happening now is that the opposite is happening. Now, these guys, these cyclical stocks, the non-stay-at-home stocks, these guys are now going up, like 3M is going up, right, which is industrial stock, which means that now, the market's getting optimistic of a vaccine that a pandemic is going to be over soon. So these guys are going up. And these guys, all right, are coming down. Now, why are they coming down? Because they've gone up too 
fast, right? Which is natural, right? Breathing out, it's a very, very healthy retracement. They need to come down a bit um, to shake out the weak holders before they continue on the journey. We call this a uh, sector rotation. So money is now rotating out of some of these companies, right? By big institutions who are taking profits. They made so much money, they're taking profits. They are, you know, pulling some money out of this and they are now going into these more undervalued cyclical stocks and hence this is going up, right? And you can see this phenomenon um, over here, all right? So if you take a look at the map of the S&P 500, so this is the S&P 500. And if you take a look at the last, uh, the last month or so, right? You can see this phenomenon, right? So in the last month, right, your stay-at-home stocks are down, 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 down. But what's green? What's going up? Semiconductors are going up. Industrials are going up. Aerospace is going up, okay? Some uh, banks are going up. So these, again, are the cyclical companies. So you can see a rotation of money from the now, you know, kind of like overextended, some overvalued companies taking profits, going to the cyclical ones. So I like this. To me, it's good news because it means that, you know, the market is getting more optimistic on um, the future of the economy. At the same time, this gives more breath to the market uh, rally, right? And like I said, we have only started this new bull market and I see that this bull market has a lot of legs over the next couple of years. So previously, the market was only being driven up by these five heavenly kings, okay? Not too healthy. But now you can see that the rest of the 495 companies, well, not all of them, right? But more of them are joining in the party. More of them are now working. So this rally has more breath. And so this is actually, uh, to me, uh, more bullish from a longer term perspective. All right, so this is another perspective. This is looking at the bar charts uh, on Finvis. And you can see that, again, the last one month, we have got the outperforming sectors, basic materials, industrials, and real estate. All right, and of course, technology, which is the stay-at-home uh, sector, right? has been negative in the last one month. So a rotation of the uh, tech into these cyclical stocks. Now, of course, energy has always been the problem child, always screwed up. So I never ever touch energy, will never touch energy, right? Okay, so having said that, I see uh, for those of you who may have missed out buying more shares of these um, tech stocks, right? This is not a very good opportunity to uh, get in again. All right, so, but we have to wait for a level of support before we add more shares. Now, again, as you know, for me, I'm very bullish on the MAGA stocks, the Microsofts, the Apple, Amazon, and all those things. So I'm still holding them. And as they are coming down, I've been selling covered calls to make profits as they are coming down because I don't want to sell my stock. Why don't I want to sell my stock? Because these are great businesses, right? As an investor, I only want to sell when the business is no longer great. But as long as it's a great business, I'm holding them for the long run. Why? Because, for example, Amazon, right? Amazon was at 3,000, 4, 3,005. Now it's dropped back down to 3,000. I'm fine with it. I know without a doubt, in the long run, Amazon will be worth $5,000 per share, $10,000 per share, no doubt. So I'm holding to compound my wealth many, many fold over the years. But in the short term, as it comes down, all right, I could make some money by using options, by buying put options. I make some money as the market comes down, I sell covered calls. So I make money as it comes down as well. And once it comes down to a certain level, I then add more shares for the next run up. So where would I add more shares into some of these great companies? Now I won't go through all of them with you, we don't have the time, but let me just show you a few examples of where I'm looking to add more shares to these um, uh, MAGAF stocks uh, that are dominating the industry. So for example, you can see here, this is my position in Facebook. 
all right and um, as it's coming down of course my profits will drop temporarily but will soon go higher eventually but in the meantime to hedge my long position and to make some profits i sold call options right this is a covered call i sold at 290 strike price so by selling this covered call at 290 you can see that i collected 28 dollars in premium and as facebook is going down i've realized six thousand dollars with another two thousand more that i will get if facebook remains below 290. this is another one sd lauder you can see again as it's coming down right profits go down temporarily but I sold a call at 220, covered call, and I received $5. And so I have now made $400. If SD Lauder remains below 220, I will get another $600. So that's how I sell covered calls to make profits as the stock goes sideways or goes down temporarily. But I know that eventually it's gonna go a lot higher. So the profit is gonna go back up again. So I make money both ways, right? Now at the same time, what I do is I buy um, put options, right? I buy put options on, for example, the SPY. So by buying these put spreads, right? It makes some profits as the market comes down. I also have positions on the VIX, which is the volatility index. So as markets go down, the VIX goes up. I also make profits on the VIX over here as well. So there are multiple ways to make money regardless of the market direction, right? So, so this is another one where I bought bear put spreads on the um, S&P 500 micro e-mini futures, the MES. So you can see it's making profits. The more the market goes down, the more profitable this, this becomes. So as a, profit, as a professional investor, you need to learn how to hedge your portfolio where you have got great companies that will go up in the long run but short term, when they go down, you have to use, you know, put options, selling covered calls to make additional profit while waiting for them to go back up again. All right, so let's go back to the charts. So as I mentioned earlier, I find that this retracement in the big tech companies are opportunities to add more shares at the right level. And if you're, if you never had a chance to get in, this is the chance to get in before they go back to heaven again, right? So let's take a look at just a few examples. The first one would be Apple, okay? So those of you who have been following me, you would know that I already sold Apple uh, about a couple of weeks ago, right? So I sold Apple because it was overvalued, you know, and I sold it, took my profits. I bought it at about $130, sold it at about $450. So I tripled my money, pretty happy. After I sold it at $450, it went up to about $500 and they did a share split. Right, where one share splits into four shares. So uh, after the share split, I'm waiting to get back into Apple. Where would I get in? Now, again, uh, let me clarify that I'm getting into Apple not as a short-term trade, not as a one-night stand, but as a long-term investment. So for investments, there are two things I look at. Number one, intrinsic value. What is it really worth? And for an investor, I only want to buy when the price is below the intrinsic value, the lower the better, I got a margin of safety. The next thing I look at is, I want a price to be at a level of support where it's more likely to reverse back up. And again, as an investor, I buy in different stages, I average in. So having said that, if you look at Apple, on the daily candles, all right, Apple, you can see, uh, has retraced and closed below the 50 moving average. So same thing applies with the S&P. If it can close back above the 50 moving average, it could continue the trend, all right? If it does that, I won't buy Apple, right? Why? Because the intrinsic value is about 98 bucks, optimistically 98 bucks. So as an investor, I won't buy because it's overvalued. I may take a short-term trade though, okay? Where it's a short-term one-night stand. See, in trading, it's okay to buy high because you buy high, sell higher. But investing, you want to buy when it's really dirt cheap, all right? So for investing, I won't get in if it bounces over there. I want it to break down and go lower to get into Apple as an investment. So where would I get in? Well, if I look at the longer term weekly candles over here, you can see, again, Apple's pretty overextended, right? Right, brief out, brief in, brief out, brief in, brief out, brief in, brief out, brief in, brief out very overextended okay 
So the first target is for it to come to the red dotted line, the 20 EMA, which is $100, okay? So I'm looking for it to come to 100 bucks. Would I buy it at 100 bucks? No, I won't. Why? Because the intrinsic value is 98. And as an investor, I want to get it only if I get a good discount. So I'm not going to buy 100, okay? So I would probably only add Apple shares as an investment at $88, right? Because at 88, I've got a bit of a margin of safety, it's a bit undervalued, plus it finds support at the uh, 40 EMA. But I'm hoping it's gonna go back down to $80. That's my ideal buy point, because 80 is a very strong uh, support at the 50 moving average. So 80 is where I'm looking at. Will it get there? I don't know, I hope so. Please go there so I can buy back my shares, and then we can, Hallelujah, all the way back up, all right? But if it doesn't go down there, I wouldn't buy it back, all right? Having said that, I do have short-term trades on Apple for one-night stands, but for investments, no, not yet, okay? Next, Facebook. Let's look at Facebook. Now, I'm still holding my Facebook shares. You saw it in my portfolio. I'm still holding it, all right? And I'm very bullish on Facebook because Facebook, they are now monetizing a lot more with Facebook shops, and so there's a lot more income streams coming in. My very uh, conservative intrinsic value is 240 to 265. That's the intrinsic value. So right now, you know, it's selling at the intrinsic value. So it's not a discount, but it's not expensive either. Okay, so where would I add more shares of Facebook? Again, if you look at weekly candles, I see a support level over here at 246. So at 246, I may add, a few more shares, not too much, uh, because it's not that undervalued. Again, I only want to buy a lot when it's undervalued, right? But there's a support at 246. The next major support is 222. Now, this is where I'll probably buy more shares. Okay, why? It's previous resistance, support, and near the 40 EMA, right? And of course, if it goes to 214, hallelujah, I'll buy a lot more because that is a very strong support over there, right? So again, remember, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. There was a crash in February, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathing in. So the first target is 246, support over there, but I won't add too many shares because it's not cheap enough, but I'm hoping it's going to go down to about 214 to triple two. That's where I'm going to really build a bigger position for the long run. Okay, I know some of you are, you know, people always like to ask me in every video, how about Tesla? How about Square? Come on, <laughs> I've said it before, right? You know, stocks like, you know, companies like Tesla and Square, I'll never invest in them, right? Because they're overvalued and they've got a lot of debt, but I will sleep with them for one night, right? So those are what I call sluts, or they're sluts. I won't marry a slut, but I'll have fun with them for a day, right? <laughs> because they're overvalued, right? So for example, if you take a look at my portfolio, uh, I do have Tesla and I do have Apple, but as one night stands, right? So, you know, I'm using options as a one night stand, uh, but I won't invest in them, right? I won't marry them, right? So if I look at the combos over here, these are some of my short term trade combos. And there you are, right? That's my, yeah, that's my Tesla. I'm making 200 bucks on Tesla, but that's a one night stand. It's a slut, it's a slut, right? What else is slack? All right, uh, let's see. Um, well, the rest are pretty good. Um, yeah, there's a slut as well. Pint water or slut, right? $200, right? So these are the short-term uh, trades um, for one night stand. So you got to know the difference between a, you know, investment and a trade, very different, right? For trades, you got stop loss, profit targets, you get in, get out fast. Investments, you hold them for the long run. All right, so that's a quick recap for me, for the market moving forward. Let's see what happens next. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.